What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the stock market, what trades am I currently involved with, as well as talking about some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the month of September, UWT and UGAS, the oil and natural gas ETF in particular guys because those have been the talk of the town so I'm going to be breaking those down in this video very in depth for those of you guys out there that are interested in potentially trading those ETFs so if you enjoy this video if you find value in this video feel free to go down below and hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market trading investing this is the channel for you and without further ado guys let's get right into it and let's talk about the the S&P 500, ticker symbol SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. We ended up closing the day today down $9.43, down 0.31%. It's pretty clear here on the four-hour chart, guys, that that all-time high, roughly 30.15, 30.20, that level is a very strong resistance on the S&P. It's clear that we got rejected there, but a positive thing is we are holding the bottom of this channel at about $29.95 as a support as of the close of the market today on the 16th. So that's a pretty positive sign um, on the S&P 500. If we go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you guys can see we closed the day down 0.52%, down $142.70, and the Dow is facing a very similar situation as the S&P. It's getting rejected right by those all-time highs at around $27,000. $400, right? You guys can see that clear resistance right around those levels, and it seems like we are pulling down now to test the bottom of this channel at around $26,900. As you guys can see, we're clearly trading between $26,900 right now and that all-time high, putting us in around a four to 500-point window on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And right now, the NASDAQ is up $13, but I'm not exactly sure... If that is where we actually did end up closing today, so I'm pulling up my Yahoo Finance app very quickly, and I'm right, right? We were end up uh, we ended up closing down twenty three dollars today on the Nasdaq, down 028 percent. So across the board today, guys markets were red, right? The markets were red, and we kind of could have predicted this based on what the futures were showing us in yesterday's um, day, right? And yesterday's after 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when you can see um, the futures on Sunday, and if you guys were paying attention to that, they were actually red. They gapped down yesterday, and uh, if you were watching that, you could have potentially predicted that the markets might be red today, um, especially since they were red in the pre-market session today as well well so that's that's the just the a gist of what the market's looking like right now guys if we hop back to the spx break down some technicals very quickly that i'm personally watching and that i'm personally seeing here you know this pullback that we've been seeing is honestly a cool off period for the entire markets right we got a bit overheated the rsi and all the major indexes it was overbought, right? It was well above 70. The S&P in particular was at about 76 here on the four-hour chart. So this pullback, you know, it's it's pretty healthy in my opinion, right? We're still maintaining a higher low from the previous, right? And if we end up holding 29.95 and start to pump up tomorrow, let's say the market futures are up, that could indicate a green potential start to the day tomorrow. You know, that could just be the continuation of the uptrend. And then, of course, we'd have to break... 30, 15, 30, 20, and then test all time highs for the uptrend to really just continue itself and further itself with that higher high, right? So at this point, we're at a pretty interesting spot, pretty important spot. You know, if we pop again, that's the continuation of the uptrend. If we break 29.95, that could be the start of a further sell-off. We may be going down to 29.50, you know, maybe even 29, let's say 40. That would put us right on these moving averages on the four-hour chart. That's kind of what I'm watching right now, but it's very, very simple the way these technicals are laying themselves out here, especially on the S&P, and the Dow is going to be very similar, right? You guys can see on the one-hour chart, the 20-day one-hour chart, the S&P is holding that 50 SMA as a support 
and on the one day one minute you guys can see we did find a bottom at 29.90 and then we ended up breaking out of the moving average resistances holding them as supports heading into the close of the market so this is a pretty good closing for the S&P for you bulls out there for the bulls out there that want the markets to go up this is a very good closing because the intraday breakout right that's very very good if we just zoom out to the 20 day one hour that little intraday breakout showing is showing us on the longer term chart here that we're holding above that 50 SMA and that 2990 support and if we just drag it out a bit even more you guys can see the green candlestick is starting to form here on the four hour chart as well so that's a pretty good sign that we could be pushing up further tomorrow but the icing on the cake what's really going to tell us if we're going to be moving up tomorrow is going to be that pre-market session the futures large caps what are they looking like tomorrow morning and you guys can already see the futures are up right now nasdaq's up 12 es which is the e-mini s p futures up four dollars and 25 cents and the dow futures are currently up 38 dollars so that's a good sign right now for a green market tomorrow based on my personal analysis here so going to the dow jones very similar right we got rejected by that all-time high resistance we're pushing down to test 26900 right now that's the support that's coming up all in all the uptrend still intact this is simply a healthy pullback an overheated rsi when we were at those all-time highs nearly the, at those all-time highs the rsi was at about 78 so that's very overheated we all know that at this point right so what to watch for you know if we end up holding 26900 we start to pop back up that's simply a higher low and a potential push to those all-time highs to retest this resistance right but let's say the markets don't go green let's say we break below low 26,900 we start to push down the next support I'll be watching is at around $26,650 putting us on top of the moving average levels here as a support on the four hour chart if we're zooming in a bit to the 20 day one hour you guys can see just like the S&P the Dow held that 50 SMA as a support that's a very good sign and on the, and on the intraday chart you can see we were trending down for the first half of the day pretty much we were using these moving averages as resistance levels then we broke out of the resistance levels midday and then we ended up closing on a pretty good note here um, at a higher low from the low of the day at twenty seven thousand thirty two dollars and fifty six cents so overall guys the markets are looking good based on the Dow the S&P the Nasdaq is looking good as well because it is slowly starting to make Make that break above 7875 which is a very strong resistance as you guys can see on this four hour chart take a look back a couple of months ago I believe this was the end of April yes I'm correct the end of April beginning of May we were struggling at about 7850 right around this area right then we broke out of it we hit that all-time high at 8050 that made that level at about 7875 7850 a support level right we ended up breaking that support making it a resistance level again and now that we broke below it a couple of days ago that made it a resistance again and we're finally starting to peak above it now giving me incentive to believe that this may be a really a, a setup before we push up to retest eight thousand dollars on the nasdaq which is roughly that all-time high that i'm seeing here on the nasdaq future and that would be a pretty nice gap fill and uh, that'll give us opportunities honestly to play some market futures or not market futures market etfs like tqqq which goes up whenever the nasdaq is going up so this is one that i'm watching not to jump to that portion of the video quite yet but i am watching this one as it is setting up pretty nicely right here with about a five six percent margin of profit if we hold the 50 sma and if the nasdaq does end up going up so this is good guys nasdaq's holding that 50 sma watch for that potential gap fill um, you know over these next couple of days especially if we get that interest rate cut of 25 basis points and especially if the markets fly on that news but again like I mentioned in previous videos I don't know if that's going to happen because a lot about the interest rate cut news you know that's already priced into the market in my opinion if you guys recall the last interest rate cut we got about a month ago at this point the market actually sold off pretty aggressively after that and then we got hit with the 
tariff news and that's when the market actually dumped in August and uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys remember that if you were paying attention to the markets in the month of August but again there's a lot of catalysts right now you know the oil situation interest rates this is going to affect the markets heavily over these next couple of weeks which is why I'm being extremely cautious with what I'm trading and that is what we're going to get into right now but before we do guys drop a comment down below let me know your thoughts on the market I'd love to know I love talking to you guys down below in the comment section I respond to every single comment on this channel so let's get into what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading guys and I ended up trading UGAZ also known as UGAZ which is a natural gas ETF that goes up whenever natural gas is going up and you guys saw this one in the title today um, should you buy UGAZ should you buy UWT well first and foremost guys don't just buy anything because I'm covering it on this channel. The purpose of this channel is for me to document my journey, what I'm doing in the stock market, what I'm learning, what I'm trading, the whole nine yards, and for you to kind of get a perspective on what I'm breaking down here so you can then take those principles take those analysis tips, whatever it may be, and then apply them to your trading. And if you understand what I'm talking about, you understand how I'm breaking things down and you apply it to your own trading. Sure. You can buy what I'm going over. If that is what you are comfortable with, if you truly understand it, but just because I'm talking about it here, don't just blindly buy it because that's just defeats the whole purpose of trying to become a self-sufficient trader, self-sufficient investor, buying things because because other people are buying them that's just a very very poor idea but just to get into where I ended up trading you guys today and what gave me the confirmation to trade you guys let's take a look at it right so you guys again it's a natural gas ETF that goes up whenever natural gas is going up so we got a one dollar and 58 cent green day today and you guys it was up seven percent and if you guys watched yesterday's video I literally called this out to the T do you guys remember I said, if we gap above this level, $23, this is going to be an attempt that we may be going up to the next resistance, which is $25. And let me just drag this chart out a year, one day, actually, maybe not that long. Let's go maybe the 184 hour. You guys can see it. And if I zoom in a bit, you'll be able to see it. Perfect. You guys can see $23 is a resistance that we were dealing with. Now that we broke above it, we're dealing with the next one, which is that $25. So the point of this was for me to be able to potentially catch a move from $23 up to $25 on that gap fill, right? And since I don't hold these overnight, obviously it didn't fulfill that entire gap fill in one day, but I was still able to hop in and out of it. So let's go into what I ended up doing right now. So on the five day, five minute, you guys can see we broke that level at 23 all the way up to 24. And what I was saying in yesterday's video is if we break $23, I want to get the pullback and the retail test on $23 as a new support to potentially get in on a dip buy. And if it held $23 and popped from there, that was going to be really the incentive for me to get into that particular ETF. And guys, this played out to a T, no joke. On the one day, one minute, you can see we dipped a bit below 23, okay? I was just playing it safe here, uh, just letting it play out, honestly. We dipped below 23 a bit, but ultimately, we got a double bottom roughly at that level at 23. It doesn't have to be exactly, guys, when you're dealing with supports, resistance levels, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly to the T, the dollar to the cent value of that support. Sometimes it dips a bit below it, and that's okay, right? And you can see... In this case, we did dip a bit below 23, down to about 2270. And what did we get here, guys? That's very, very bullish. We got that double bottom, right? We got this double bottom. And although this move was extremely quick, this was about a 20 minute move here in you guys. I honestly was able to get it. And this is a bit lucky on my part because at this point in time, I wasn't honestly doing anything um, in terms of trading. I was playing it safe. I'm kind of waiting for the Fed meeting. I want to see what goes down, how the market reacts to that. But no joke, I was 
here at my computer a bit before power hour, um, you know, watching what, what was going on, watching you guys because natural gas gapped up yesterday. It was pretty hot, right? Oil too, crude oil gapped up. So I was just watching it, right? And then all of a sudden, we got that breakout in natural gas that was at this point in time. Natural gas broke out of resistance levels on this one day, one minute. It broke out of the 50 SMA, broke out of the 180 SMA. And this was very quick that I had to react pretty quick, right? Because if you see, this took literally... 30 minutes to get from this point at 264 up to around 270, which was actually the resistance level on natural gas, right about 270 that we talked about a couple of videos ago. So it filled that gap in about 30 minutes, which was pretty, pretty crazy. And that is what ended up allowing me to get into you guys, you know, as natural gas was breaking out of those moving average resistances. You know, on that intraday chart, that was a bullish move for me. So I ended up taking a position. I believe it was at around, uh, let's see here on the on the one day, one minute. It was around this level at around 23.15. Again, this was a quick move where I didn't build this one to size because I didn't really have enough time. I hopped in and then it started to move like crazy. And it was one of those that it moved so quickly. I was like, screw it. I don't have a lot of money into it because I didn't put, you know, I didn't scale into it usually how I do, right? So I ended up just taking a small, quick gain from around 23.15, whatever it was, up to around, let's see, I think I think I sold after we broke the resistance at around 23.40. It was around a 1.1, 1.2% move today on you guys. And you may be asking yourself, Stas, why don't you just hold this if you do think it's going to go to $25, which I do, right? I personally think you guys is going to go to $25 here in the next couple of days, whether it's tomorrow, next week, I don't know, but right now, based on these technicals that I'm seeing, you know, we clearly pulled down, held 23, and popped today, right? So going to the next resistance to fill the gap, it's not too out of reach right now, so I think it's very, very possible, especially if these technicals hold. But the reason that I'm not holding it overnight, guys, is because I've been burned in the past holding inverse ETFs overnight, right? Holding these, not really inverse, just leveraged ETFs in general because they they move so quickly, right? You guys saw UWT gapped up 45%. The inverse is DWT, which gapped down 45%. Imagine if you held that over the weekend, you'd wake up and your position's down 45%. That's insane, or like 30%, 40%, whatever it ended up being, right? And I've been burned like that in the past where I've held an ETF and then I woke up the next day down 15%, just like that. So, in my opinion, do what you want, right? You could swing trade these, whatever, if you are you have more risk tolerance, whatever it may be, but these are really meant for day trading, right? Really meant for those quick in and out moves, and uh, that's how I ended up playing it today, you know, buy and hold at your own risk, but the, the investment, you know, these, these, the investment purpose for these is to be an intraday play, right? In and out. Maybe you can get away with a two-day swing trade a couple days if you're a bit more risk tolerant, but that's really just up to you. And uh, that's what I ended up doing, right? I do think it's going to 25, but I just feel more comfortable hopping in and out during the day up to $25, even though it means I'm not going to make as much money as somebody that swing traded it and then got to 25. But hey, I'm a person that values conserving capital. I don't like just putting money on the line like it's nothing, right? This is hard-earned money. There's a, there's a strategy behind this, risk management, right? And I just feel more comfortable not holding these overnight. And that's just me personally, right? So you guys... That's kind of the breakdown as well as what I ended up doing, right? I just think it's going to go up to 25 over these next couple of days. And I do think this could potentially be a good opportunity to buy it if you understand it for yourself. If you've done your research, if you understand the risk, this is definitely a good time to, in my opinion, hop in and out of you guys. It's very, very hot. Natural gas is hot in general, right? So I'm also involved in two swing trades. Not going to get too deep into those in this video because I don't want this video to be too long, but I'm still holding AT&T right now and at V, those are the two swing trades I'm involved with. At V, I'm looking to sell at around $60. That is the goal here on the one year, one day. You guys can see if we break this resistance, we could be filling the next gap here, especially as video game stocks um, 
do well because they've been crushed and they finally seem like they're coming back up here. And, uh, you know, AT&T goal sell right now is $40 at this point in time. And, of course, I'll keep you guys updated on those swings when I do end up taking a profit. If I take a loss, of course, I'll let you guys know that as well. So let's get into UWT now very quickly, guys, because you know that this was really, really hot. Again, I talked about it a couple of minutes ago. This gapped up 40% today, meaning it's inverse, which is DWT, ended up gapping down roughly 40% today, which was crazy. And these are based on crude oil. They trade on crude oil when crude oil is going up, right? UWT is going up. When crude oil is going up, DWT is going down. So we had an attack on about 5% of um, the Saudi Arabian... Um, What's it called? A, a, I think it was like a processing plant. There was attack, an attack on it that really affected 5%. I think it was like 5% of the global oil supply, right? So the oil supply was squeezed, right? Meaning prices shot up, right? Prices shot up. And you guys can see here on crude oil, the gap up yesterday was insane, insane. It was straight up insanity, right? From $55 all the way up to $63. We hit that resistance at 63. We pulled down and it seems like we're holding strong here, which is what leads me to believe that this could just be a dip buy to potentially buy UWT. And let me explain why I'm saying that. If we drag this chart out a bit to the one year one day take a look at the channel that um, crude oil is currently in right the fact that we gapped above $60 yesterday on Sunday in the futures market that broke us above a very critical resistance on crude oil which was $60 from back in the beginning towards the middle of July in 2019 and when we break a resistance guys this is very good especially if we pull down and confirm that old resistance as a new support which I'm pretty sure crude oil did that if we go to the five day five minute you guys can see Again, we popped up 63, we pulled down a bit, and then we ultimately held that new support at $60, and we started to climb up, and we ended up filling the gap again to about $63 today. So this is extremely bullish to me, guys. Although we did pull back, you know, this is still holding a higher low on the overall trend here on the five-day, five-minute. So this is what I'm saying here, guys. If this ends up holding... This trend right here, this higher low, and especially if we break out of this 50 SMA on the 5-day, five 5-minute, five this could be a huge bullish move on crude oil where it could go from 62.50 all the way back up to $63, right? Very critical, though, is to watch this 50 SMA because right now it is acting as a resistance. That is one drawback to this, in my opinion, um, to potentially trading UWT because we would like these candlesticks to be above the 50 SMA before hopping into UWT, or at least that's what I would personally want here. So just keep an eye on that. That is what I'm watching at this point, you know, for a UWT trade tomorrow. If we zoom out a bit more on crude oil, the 20 day one hour, you can see it's extremely bullish, right? We popped up, we pulled down, and now we're breaking out again. The pull down, we're seeing some green candlesticks, and we're still holding that trend. So if we start to fill the gap up tomorrow, guys, to 63 again, UWT is going to be fantastic, right? We pulled up to 1650 today. We popped Popped up rather, and we're, we pulled down to about 1520 at the close of the market, 1530, opening up around a 8 9% profit margin uh, potential here. If crude oil again does end up filling the gap up to 6350, right around where it topped off earlier today. And another thing about crude oil, guys, is let's say it breaks $63. You know, if we go to the 184 hour chart very quickly, I can show you guys what I mean here. You know, if we break 6350, $64, you know, we could be running up to $65 and maybe even retest that high that we're seeing here on this four hour chart, especially if maybe another attack occurs on an oil plant. You know, this stuff can literally happen, which is another reason why holding these inverse ETFs, leveraged ETFs overnight is extremely risky because let's say another attack occurred, let's say another 5% of the global supply of oil 
got hit. Let's say that happened. What do you think would happen to crude oil? It would gap up another 5%, at least another 10%. And then UWT is going to go up 30% again, but then DWT is going to go down 30%. So if you were holding DWT, you'd get screwed, right? So it's just tricky. It's tricky, guys. But, um, Intraday play, expect oil, natural gas to be very volatile over these next couple of days, especially oil here because this is directly affected with what's going on right now, and uh, that's really it, right? Just watch oil. You know, if we end up dumping, right? Let's say we end up dumping on crude oil here, um, you know, five-day, five-minute. Let's say we end up shooting below $60. That could be a position, um, a point in time to take a, a short position on oil, which would be, you know, trading DWT. That is very possible. Possible. But as of now, I just, I honestly just think there's more upside to UWT. But watch what the futures are doing, guys. Watch what crude oil futures are doing. If they're popping up tomorrow morning, UWT might be the move. If we're selling below $60 tomorrow, which I don't think is going to happen, but let's say it does end up happening, DWT might be a sick move over the next couple of days. So that's really what really was in the title, right? UWT, you guys, those are my honest opinions. And again, I can't say this enough, guys. Don't buy or trade these based on my opinion. You have to understand them for yourself. So that's what I'm mainly watching, guys. Some stocks that I wanted to talk about today. Um, really, there's just not that many stocks that I'm watching because this Fed meeting is very, very, very critical, in my opinion, as to what I'm going to be trading. Obviously, I'm in at V and AT&T. Like I said, I'm watching those. Again, I guess another one that you can throw into the mix here is cat caterpillar ticker symbol c a t if we go to the 184 hour you know caterpillar gapped up above 130 it seems like it's holding 130 now as a support or, or it, it already did actually a couple of days ago when it pulled down and popped so just watch caterpillar i'm watching it to see if it continues this move upwards you know if we pop into 134 that could be a potential swing play um you know up to 140 40, you know, I don't know if that's going to happen again, especially with trade war tensions. Um, you know, Caterpillar does typically get hit. A lot of these industrials do get hit, but uh, I'm watching it either way, guys. I think it's a pretty good position right here. Um, it's at a pretty good position for a potential um, swing trade. And, uh, you know, some other ones... I think Walmart was one of my watch lists. You know, Walmart's pulling down here, 118, down to 115, holding that 50 SMA as a support, holding a higher low. You know, this could potentially be a pullback play. Um, you know, we're also holding that previous high at 115, old resistance as a new support. So watch Walmart. These are what I'm watching. But honestly, guys, again, I can't say this enough. I'm waiting for what's going to happen with this interest rate. You know, this is very important to me um, in my analysis. And honestly, I advise you guys to do the same because that could really rock the markets in either direction if something crazy happens. You know, who knows what's going to happen, guys. Anything in this economy could happen. Um... It's just what you got you have to prepare for in terms of, you know, trading stocks, analyzing stocks, analyzing the news, etc. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, if you found value in it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me involving the stock market, trading, investing. This is the channel for you. And drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the market, thoughts on UWT, DWT, UGAS, oil, stock market in general. I'd love to know your thoughts and if you stayed till the end you guys are awesome i really really appreciate you and uh that's it i'll catch you all in the next video good luck tomorrow i hope you all did great today peace out